Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Space. I am Dr. Samadarshan Mahanti and today we will discuss about the Brighton cycle. Brighton cycle is also known as your Joule cycle and the Brighton cycle is an ideal cycle for gas turbines. So gas turbine may be open cycle gas turbine, it may be a closed cycle gas turbine. Open cycle gas turbine is usually used in case of automobile vehicles or air traps and as far as the closed cycle gas turbine is concerned it is particularly finds application in stationary installations. So before discussing the Brighton cycle let me briefly tell you what happens in case of your open cycle and what happens in case of your closed cycle. In open cycle air is taken into the compression where it is compressed and then this compressed air is taken to the combustion chamber. In the combustion chamber fuel is added and due to addition of fuel huge amount of thermal energy is developed and the working substance is then taken to the turbine where it undergoes expansion, does some mechanical work and then it is exhausted and fresh air is taken to start a new cycle. As far as the compressor is concerned, compressor is being driven by the turbine and the net work output developed is the difference between the work that is developed in the turbine and the work that is consumed in the compression. But when it comes to your closed cycle, you do have a compression, you have two sets of heat exchangers and you do have a turbine. First, air is or the gas is taken in to the compression where it is compressed. After that it is taken to the heat exchanger where heat is added to the working substance. Then it is taken to the turbine where it expands and does some mechanical work and finally it is sent to the compression via the heat exchanger where heat is ejected to the surroundings. But in both the cases, the thermodynamic processes are exactly the same and the Joule or Brighton cycle consists of four thermodynamic processes. Let me show the Brighton cycle in PV and TS diagram. First, I will show it in PV diagram followed by TS diagram. So you can see the four thermodynamic processes. The processes 1, 2 represents your isentropic compression process, 2, 3 represents the constant pressure heat addition process, 3, 4 represents the isentropic expansion process and 4, 1 represents the constant pressure heat ejection process. If you compare the Brighton cycle with that of diesel cycle, the only difference is that the heat rejection takes place at constant pressure when it comes to your brighton cycle whereas it takes place at constant volume when it comes to your diesel cycle. Now the net work produced is the difference between the work that is developed in the turbine and the work that is consumed in the compression and all of us know that in a cyclic process 
the net heat transfer is equal to net work transfer so that is equal to q net or that is equal to heat supply minus heat injected now we can find out the efficiency of the cycle from the first principle and all of us know that the efficiency of any cycle h the net work done divided by heat supplied and that is equal to heat supplied minus heat ejected divided by heat supplied that is equal to 1 minus qr by qs now first we have to find out what is heat supplied heat supplied is equal to m cp into temperature difference that is t3 minus t2 because heat is supplied in process O3 m is the mass of the working substance the heat addition is taking place at constant pressure that's why we have considered cp not your cv then the temperature difference t3 minus t2 as far as heat rejection is concerned that is mass multiplied by specific heat at constant pressure multiplied by temperature difference that is t4 minus t1 in this case also we have taken cp because the heat rejection is also taking place at constant pressure now if you substitute those things you get 1 minus t4 minus t1 divided by t3 minus t2 you can denote this as equation 1 this actually represents the efficiency of the joule or Brighton cycle in terms of temperature parameters now we can also find out the efficiency in terms of both pressure as well as compression issues but for that we have to establish the relationship between the temperature and pressure parameters and temperature and volume parameters for isotropic process 1 2 T2 by T1 is equal to P2 by P1 to the power ga minus 1 by ga. Let this be equation 2. For isentropic process 3 4, you have T3 by T4 is equal to P3 by P4 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. Let this be equation 3. This is equation 3, but one thing that you do, you put P2 instead of P3 and P1 instead of P4 because process 2 3 is a constant pressure process so you can substitute p3 by p2 and 4 1 is also a constant pressure process so you can substitute p4 by p1 and as i have told you this is equation 3 so from equation 2 and 3 we get t2 by t1 is equal to T3 by T4 and that is equal to P2 by P1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. From this 
we can say that T4 by T1 is equal to T3 by T2. And this implies T4 by T1 minus 1 is equal to T3 by T2 minus 1. We have deducted 1 from left hand side as well as right hand side. And this implies this is T4 minus T1 divided by T1 is equal to T3 minus T2 by T2. And this implies T4 minus T1 divided by T3 minus T2 is equal to T1 by T2. So now, we know that T2 by T1 is T2 by T1 to the power of minus 1. So you can substitute T4 minus T1 by T3 minus T2 by this is P1 by P2 to the power of minus 1 by gamma. Let this be equation 4. Now, if we substitute this in equation 1, we can find out the efficiency. So this is equal to 1 minus instead of T4 minus 1 divided by T3 minus T2, you can P1 by P2 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. That is equal to 1 minus 1 by P2 by P1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. That is nothing but 1 minus 1 by Rp to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma where Rp represents the pressure ratio. Let it be equation 5. So now we have found out the efficiency of the writing cycle in terms of temperature parameters and as well as in terms of pressure ratios. But all of us know the relationship between the pressures and volume. So eta as you know is 1 minus P2 by sorry, this is P1 divided by P2 to the power gamma minus by 1 by gamma and you can represent this as 1 minus V2 by V1 to the power gamma minus 1 that is equal to 1 minus 1 by V1 by V2 to the power gamma minus 1 that is equal to 1 minus 1 by Rk to the power gamma minus 1 you can denote this as equation 6 where Rk represents the compression ratio. Now we have found out the efficiency of the Brighton cycle in terms of temperature parameters, in terms of pressure ratios as well as in terms of compression ratios. And if you compare the efficiency in terms of the compression ratio, one thing that you can observe that it is exactly the same as we obtain in case of auto cycle. In auto cycle also, the efficiency eta is given by 1 minus 1 by 
R a to the power gamma minus 1. So for same compression ratio, both the auto cycle as well as the Brighton cycle have same thermal efficiency. And if you compare this with auto cycle as far as the processes are concerned, two of the processes are exactly same. But in Brighton cycle, both the heat addition as well as the heat rejection are taking place at constant pressure. Whereas when it comes to your auto cycle, both the heat addition and heat rejection are taking place at constant volume. So I sincerely believe that this lecture on Brighton cycle would be extremely useful in understanding the concept of Brighton cycle and also we have derived the efficiency in terms of temperature parameters, pressure ratios as well as compression ratios. If you have any doubt related to this lecture, please do put questions so that I will try to answer. Please do subscribe to my channel if you have not done so till now and I would also request you to share this video with your friends. Hope to see you soon for another lecture on my YouTube channel Rudy Space. Thank you all.